Okay, folks, we are coming to you live from Jupiter, Florida. This is another edition of the Brilliantly Dumb Show on Big Game Pub, coming to you on your local airwaves. However you're listening, why ever you're listening, we don't really give a fuck. We're just happy that you are indeed listening. Folks, we got a very, very action-packed show today. We got Mikey Bear Down Cuz and Joey Coldcuts coming on for our prize pick segment. Mikey Bear Down Cuz did it again Sunday unbelievable what's going on with this young man working to perfection look let me tell you this i've said it time and time again and i'll say it again you can't fill the shoes of a jerry don you just can't you can't fill the shoes of a jersey jerry but what mikey bear down cuz has done is come on to the show every single week he's done a phenomenal job on our prize pick segment with now joey cold guts and he's done even a better job of putting money in our pockets with these picks that he's been given out. I've always been a believer that the house is always going to win because they do. And even with sports betting, the odds are just stacked against you. With that being said, the success that this man has had in our prize pick segment, what he did again this Sunday, absolutely was unbelievable to me. I mean, he just continues to, he's one of the best I've ever seen. Um, And then we got AJ Minter. From the Atlanta Braves, Atlanta Braves reliever going to be joining us. I'll be telling you about A.J. Minter in just a sec here. The Braves are going to the World Series against the Astros, which we love. Because for me, anybody but the Red Sox would have been okay. Now we just want the Braves to kick the shit out of the Astros. But it's time to get into our buy or sell segment. Our buy or sell segment, what happened throughout the week? Good or bad, what took place, what are we buying stock in, and what are we selling stock in? It could be food, it could be teams, it could be an athlete, anything is on the table here. Let's get down to business number one, something that I am going to buy. I'm been spending some time here in Jupiter, Florida, something that I am going to buy is the game of pickleball. Pickleball is making its way up the ranks. Usually anybody under the age of 50 does not play pickleball, but I don't give a shit because I've been playing it recently and I think it is just a phenomenal sport. I think it is so much damn fun. And yes, I did call it a sport. Pickleball is like ping pong on steroids. It's just unbelievable. And it's a phenomenal workout. And the best workouts are the ones where you don't even realize that you're working out because you're having fun doing it. Pickleball, don't knock it till you try it, I think is unbelievable. And I'm having a blast playing it. Something that I'm going to buy. So I'm buying pickleball and then I'm going to actually buy stock in Brussels sprouts. Now, it's pretty amazing what's been happening with the Brussels sprout because the Brussels sprout itself was always frowned upon. It was everybody's worst enemy. It was kids' worst enemy. People just hated the Brussels sprout. But what's been happening with the Brussels sprout recently is very fascinating to me. The Brussels sprout is making its way to a lot of menus. It's even making its way into a side at a steakhouse, which is not frowned upon anymore. To have a steak and Brussels sprouts is not out of the ordinary anymore. I like what I'm seeing with the Brussels sprout. Some people shave the Brussels sprouts and put it as like a Caesar salad. I think it's phenomenal. Big Brussels sprout guy. And and to see a food that was so low on the list and so frowned upon, making the waves that it's been making, look out for the Brussels sprout. I'm going to go ahead and buy stock in the Brussels sprout, something that I'm going to sell. We got another food coming, frozen yogurt. I used to love frozen yogurt. A lot of hype surrounding frozen yogurt. I think frozen yogurt has sort of lost its flair. I think frozen yogurt's kind of lost its spice. A lot of people were loving the frozen yogurt train. I just don't think it's that great anymore. Now I would kind of just prefer ice cream. I, I just, I'm taking ice cream over frozen yogurt. I think it was good while it lasted, but the buzz and the hype around the frozen yogurt is really starting to go down. So we are buying the Brussels sprout and then the total opposite has happened with frozen yogurt. I am selling frozen yogurt. Number four, something that I'm gonna sell um, is myself. I'm going to sell myself on the market. Um, Real bad play out of me Sunday. Something that just absolutely cannot happen is I played pickleball in the morning 
And I found myself taking a nap on a football Sunday. Now I'm at my dad's place. I, my mom and dad's place. I did not have NFL red zone. The Sunday experience, the NFL football Sunday experience, when you do not have red zone, is a total game changer. We were limited to one game. It was Falcons, Dolphins. That's the local game here. With that being said, you can't take a nap on football Sunday. I hate what I did with my football Sunday. I regret it. And then to make matters even worse, by the way, when you take the nap, when you wake up, it, it takes you about 30 minutes to get back to real life and back into it maybe even 45 to an hour to really wake up and, and, and start the day and be back into reality. Um, hate what I did with the NFL Sunday nap will not happen again, but the reason I'm selling myself to make matters even worse, um, Mikey bear down cuz put in a parlay that I gave to the people in the morning that we put out to the public, gave it to them in the morning. He hit three out of five. So we won people with the way prize picks works. He won people some of their money back. Um, but then at night, Sunday night game, a little bit of a chase, Bear Down Cuz calls me and he wants to make another prize picks pick. Three-team parlay, $300 to win $1,500. He gave me the pick at about seven fifty. dollars to be exact. Now the Sunday night game doesn't start till about 8 15, 8 20. I personally felt that it was too late to give the people the pick to where they would only have 10, 15 minutes to put the pick in. And then it would kind of just be a tease for the ones that didn't get the pick in bear down. Cause put his three player props in for Sunday night football that he gave to me. And it hit and it hit real good. $300 to win 1500. I put it on my Instagram that we won it without even giving people the picks, which is something that just can't happen. Zach Pascal, wide receiver, over two and a half receptions. Jonathan Taylor, over 70 and a half rushing yards. He rushed for 107. Jimmy Garoppolo, under 18 pass completions. It was a monsoon out there. Bear down because hit the parlay. I hate what I did to my Sunday. I really did. I took the nap. I didn't put the pick out there for the people to win, the faithful that supports me every single day. Um, I am selling Bob just, just a Sunday that cannot happen again and will not happen again. Um, I'm selling Bob for my lack of, of performance Sunday. Something that I'm going to buy, our last and final one that we're going to buy is who's coming on our interview right now. And I'm not just pumping up this guy's tires. NLCS game five. We're filming for Bob the Sports. I'm heckling AJ Minter, reliever for the Atlanta Braves. He turns up to me before going into the game and recognizes me and points at me, um, which to me was unbelievable because here's a guy that's getting ready to go into the biggest game of his life. And he takes the time in the bullpen because he recognizes my voice from the internet, turns, smiles, and points at me right after I'm there heckling. I'm videotaping for Bob the Sports. Long story short, me and Mentor end up talking on Instagram, becoming friends. We've been talking just about every single day. Braves go to the World Series. I totally do a 180 from the heckling to totally supporting the living hell out of this guy. Um, and now he's coming on the Brilliantly Dumb Show. A true, true beauty. Um, I texted him a day before if he could come on, the, playing in the World Series tomorrow. He's coming on to the Brilliantly Dumb Show. He's been lights out for the Atlanta Braves. And I don't think a lot of people realize, I didn't even realize till I really did my research on him for the show. Um, a guy that's had his up and downs throughout his career. He's been called to the minors, back up to the big leagues. Now is thriving, um, going to the World Series now. Buy your stock in AJ Minter. We've been looking for somebody on the Brilliantly Dumb Show to really get behind and support an athlete who was gonna support us that we were gonna support right back A.J. Minter is without question our guy now. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's bring on the big fella himself, the big lefty, the big southpaw. That's A.J. Minter from the Atlanta Braves. Let's bring him in hot. Let's give a warm, warm round of applause for the big fella. Look at that fucking, you know, I got to tell you what, man, the legend of A.J. Minter continues to go are we live from houston at the ballpark right now we're still in atlanta we're gonna fly it at one o'clock here in a few hours and where were you right now you in the dugout 
So I'm in the dugout. Un- you know, AJ, I will tell you this. You, you tell something that's amazing to me. I texted you late last night, very last yeah. night. And I said, AJ, can you hop on the podcast tomorrow? Here's the beauty of AJ Minter. You said, what, sure, what works best for your schedule? You're playing in the World Series tomorrow, and we're going off of my schedule. I got a coffee mug. I'm in Jupiter, Florida, that says keep calm and play tennis. Yet we're going off my schedule, AJ. Thanks for having me on. No, I'm excited. Freaking going the World Series. Can't believe it. It's unbelievable. And, AJ, you got to. Now, I don't know if it was as iconic for you as it was for me. The Brilliantly Dumb Faithful, we've been looking for a guy to get behind. Just somebody that we could give all our support to. Somebody that we could really get behind. Talk me through this Dodgers game. Game five. NLCS. You're in the bullpen. You're getting absolutely heckled. Can you take me through your side of that story of how this all began? Yeah. Um, as you said, just one back in the bullpen. Just about to go in. Probably you know one of the biggest games. I've ever, you know, been in. And so, you know, for anything, you know, I've obviously seen your videos in the past. And if anyone has seen your videos, people can recognize your voice instantly. And I, I told you this. And, you know, I was just going about getting uh, my mind right, you know, about to start warming up. And, of course, everyone in the bullpen, uh, you know, is heckling you, you know, saying whatever. But instantly – I heard your voice and I looked up and I, I had to say something to you just because I knew it was you. And so, yeah, that's how it all started. And uh, I'm glad, you know, I did recognize your voice. Your voice it was pretty special. What was nuts for me though, is you're getting ready again, biggest game of your life. Yeah. And you, sure. don't, you don't even seem nervous. I mean, you were smiling, you were laughing when yeah. you saw me and then you go in and you're like, you didn't even seem nervous to me, AJ, which yeah. I just is nuts. I feel like it kind of, it relieved my nerves a little bit. Just, uh, you know, just a smile about it and um, just to settle in. And I think it definitely helped me out for sure. Let me ask you something, AJ. Okay. You go into one of yep. the playoff games. Okay. NLCS. Now, it, there's got to be a level, okay? Because it mm-hmm. seems like with the playoffs, every pitch is like the last pitch, which is just the beauty of the MLB playoffs. Is there, when you go out and you pitch a playoff game compared to a regular season game, is it more adrenaline or is it more nerves? Um, it's both for sure. Uh, I don't know if you saw me the other night pitch, but I literally, I think I fist pumped on every single hitter. Even if I didn't strike them out, if I got them out, I'm fist pumping just because each out is so big in the postseason. And um, it's truly, words can't describe it, the feeling that you get when you're out there, but it truly is special. Do you, I'm even, I'm watching you and I'm thinking to myself, the buildup that you have, okay, being a bullpen guy, you know, at some point, especially with how lights out you are, you got the lead. You know, at some point, you're getting the call to start getting loose. So that whole buildup's got to be a lot. Then you get into the ball game. Then you got the adrenaline there. When you go out and your lights out the way that you have been, when the inning's over, do you just take? Is it just a breath of fresh air? Oh, for sure. Like, of course you. Like, I wanted to keep pitching. I want to go back out there for that third inning. Um, but when they told me, you know. My job is done. Magic's coming in behind, or Luke's coming in behind me. Um, it's definitely you're relieved just to you know get out of there. Um, but like I said, this is everything you work for your whole entire life. There's nothing that can describe the feeling when you're out there, especially in the postseason, let alone going on the World Series. I mean, it's definitely going to be special. Hopefully, we can get four more wins and uh, win a World Series. Now, I know we wanted to get it done in Los Angeles because I was going to come out and celebrate yeah. with you guys, which which would oh, have yeah. just been, I mean, <laughs> marvelous, just just marvelous. But you get the win in Atlanta. OK, mm-hmm. again, your lights fucking out. The innings over. You guys win the World Series the whole night, even now. I mean, your balls, AJ, meant they're got to be just dragging across the floor you got to be on cloud nine no cloud nine is is the understatement i mean keep saying there's there's nothing to describe it i mean there really isn't 
And but like I said, job's not finished. Four more wins. You gonna freaking come to the game or what? You coming out to Atlanta? Uh, we're, we're working with the Bob Does Sports to get over there. I think it would be a shame if I don't get over there. So I'm doing it. I'm telling you, AJ, we've been looking for the guy who's gonna be the guy that the Brilliant Dumb Faithful was gonna get behind. And I don't think there's a better guy as I'm looking at the hat that you're wearing right now. I just don't think there's a guy who, who would be better to, to get behind. And I got to get myself to Atlanta. You got to. Um, obviously, I don't know if you know, but I'm from Texas, born and raised. Uh, You're an went to Texas A&M. Yep, yeah. went to Texas A&M right down the road from Houston. So obviously got to show some love and you know, dress up the right way. Tell, tell me something, AJ. You, when you guys are done, okay, when you win the NLCS, Mm -hmm. how does it all work you got the party in the locker room champagne's going to get popped you guys are going to go nuts is there somebody coordinating what the next move is when you guys go out you got to eat at some uh, point. that's that's the hardest thing is finding time to eat and i made the mistake last or the other night and i did not eat just because everything was just chaos so yeah you, you come into the, the locker room you spray champagne you celebrate you know you hug all the guys and so, get, you haven't been to Atlanta yet, but we have, it's called the Battery right outside the stadium. It's just where all the bars are at, you know, all the restaurants. So, we wanted to go out in the Battery and a place called PBR. And, yeah, that's where we went after, after the game. We got there, I think we got there around 1.30, 1 o'clock. And they stayed open till I think, 3 o'clock when they shut it down. Now, so we were out there with the fans and everything was pretty cool. There's got to be somebody that makes the call to say the Atlanta Braves are coming to where it's not like you guys are standing at the host stand waiting to get seated. So I, I, I know the manager out there at PBR. So I, of course, I, I text them. <laughs> so so you, I text made, you made the call. Oh yeah, for sure. Unbelievable. Un <laughs> fucking believable. What's the post game. Okay. When you guys, when there's not a clinching game, OK, mm -hmm. is is the post game spread enhanced? When we're talking about food compared to the regular mm -hmm. season, you probably got a little post game spread playoff baseball. How much better is the post game spread? Oh, it's it's surf and turf every night. You got, Come on. You got the steaks, you got the steaks, you got lobster, crab legs. I mean, they definitely we're, we're obviously pretty spoiled in the big leagues, but definitely all. All the, the gourmet meals come out in the postseason for sure. Do you – you're a guy, you've been you've been through it. I mean, you had Tommy John surgery. You've been through a whole mm -hmm. lot. I'm, I'm looking at you, AJ, and you just look on cloud nine. You really do. You're, you're just – it looks like you're riding a high right now. I know there's still business to do. But how yeah. – from a mental standpoint, going from the big leagues getting called down back to the minors, back up, like – when you make the transition, when you go from the big leagues and then have to do a stint in the minor leagues, how is it just a is it a tough mindset going from that stadium and all that? Now you got to go back to the minors, grind it out there. For sure. So I got sent down previously in 2019. I I struggled, and that was the first time that I I got sent back down to the minor leagues. It was like you said from going from the, the major leagues back to AAA is the worst feeling in the world. Just because, you know, you're back to 12 hour bus rides. You're not taking, you know, a private plane anymore. Uh, you're staying at, you know, motels. So, it, and you're having to share a room if you, with a, a teammate. And it's, it, it's mentally, it's the hardest thing. And so I, I've been through it. And unfortunately, I got sent down again this year and back in, I guess it was back in June or July. And so I've been through it before. So I, I knew what I had to do. And luckily, I wasn't down there too long and got back up to the big league just because I knew this was a special team. And I was just trying to make the postseason uh, roster. I mean, I, I, that was my goal because I knew we had a chance to go into the postseason. And you definitely don't want to miss out on that. So I was just trying to make the roster. I was trying to do everything I can to prove to them that I'm capable of you know, pitching on this team. And luckily, it's all been paying, paying off so far. 
that's nuts. It, like, and you brought off even when you think about that, that like we don't think about even just the the accommodation from going there to like you said the bus ride, sharing the room, the hotel. It's got to be different. What's the compared to earlier in the season to now? Because now you go out there and you look at you and you just know you're going to be locked down. That you just you you're going to have your race stuff. How much of it is the stuff that you have compared to just the mindset that you from from the beginning of the season to where you are now? Yeah, I mean, I just feel like it's I, whenever you fail, I mean, you have to learn, you have to adapt. And so I've trust me, I failed a lot. Um, I've been through failure. I've been through um, just the grind. And I can tell you one thing I, I couldn't have done you know, what I've been able to do this in the second half of the season without, you know, going through that failure. So it, it definitely is a mindset. Um, and it's all about confidence. You have to go out there. It's all about heart and nuts. Now, I mean, this is the postseason and everyone's going to be talented. Obviously, it's the big leagues. It's the two best teams left in the World Series. So everyone's going to be on their A game. And from here on now, it's all about heart and nuts. You got to you talk about – even from a confidence standpoint, just looking at you right now with the hat you got going, the fit you got going, you look like you got to be the most confident guy in the clubhouse. And that, that includes both teams. I mean, it's just a special group of guys is what we have in the locker room. Uh, I think what separates us is just our chemistry. Um, we're a tight knit group and I tell you what, we like to have fun. We like to we like to party. We like to celebrate, and that's what it's all about. I mean, part of winning is because you want to celebrate. You want to shit with the fans, and um, it really is special here in Atlanta. Uh, the crowd, I mean, just the fans have been unbelievable, and hopefully, we can bring a World Series back to Atlanta. Let's say you guys, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but let's say the Atlanta Braves do win the World Series, okay? Mm -hmm. Do you think to yourself, even without, even without, do you think to yourself, or is it hard to even think that way right now, that regardless what happens, you're always going to have to take this with you. Like, you're always going to have this. You're always going to have game footage. You're always going to be able to take this with you, regardless of what happens to where, even if you guys win the World Series, regardless of what happens in your career moving forward, you reach the top of the top and nothing can take that away from you. I mean, maybe one day whenever I'm done with baseball that I can look back on it. But right now, I just want to win. I mean, I expect nothing less to not, you know, win a World Series one day. And I'm going to do everything I can, you know, to achieve that dream. And, but if anything less in a world series, it's, it's just a failure. It's just, it's something that I'm striving for. And like I said, whenever I guess I get done with baseball one day, I can look back on this and appreciate. And, um, but I, I'm not stopping anytime soon. Hopefully. I got to tell you, AJ, and I don't think a lot of the people even know the ups and downs that you've had to get to where you're at right now. But you talk about a group in the Brilliant Unfaithful that's going to be having your back and just riding this way. Now, I'm going to do everything in my power to make it to Atlanta for the World Series. But you talk about a crew, everybody listening to this podcast, that is going to be on the AJ Mentor train. I'm so happy that it's you. I, I really am. I think you are the easiest guy in the world to root for. I appreciate that. And, you know, like I'm just, God, I'm just so fired up to go back, obviously, go back home to Texas. But we're freaking going to the World Series. I mean, this is this is best as it gets. I mean, words words truly can't define what we're about to go through. And I'm obviously uh, thankful to you know have y'all y'all support. But God's not finished. Four more wins. Hey, you go get them, big fella. I appreciate the hell out of you. You have no idea how much even now our friendship means to me since that moment happened right there, how cool that was for me. And even, I mean, you just hopping on, I'm telling you, AJ, we are in your corner and you go kick the shit out of those Astros, big man. Oh, I definitely want to beat the Astros for sure. We, we got this. You're the best buddy. Be good. All right. We'll see you folks. We interrupt the brilliant Dump show to let you know that the brilliant Dump show is brought to you by our good friends over at Manscaped this holiday season. 
I'm giving thanks to our friends at Manscaped. Think your holiday spread is good? It's time to give thanks to Manscaped. Performance Package 4.0, or as I like to call it, the perfect package for your package. Inside, you'll find their lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, weed whacker, ear and nose hair trimmer, crop preserver, ball deodorant, crop reviver toner, performance boxer briefs, and a travel bag to hold your goodies. Outside of the ad I'm doing right now, I will say I do have the Manscaped boxers. They send me a ton of those. Fucking phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Sorry to curse there, Manscaped, but it's true. You guys do a phenomenal, phenomenal boxer. Get 20% off plus free shipping with promo code 20 Bobby, two zero Bobby at manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping with the code 20 Bobby at manscaped.com. Be thankful this holiday season for the best gift of them all from Manscaped. Your balls will thank you. In the meantime, we are moving on. Okay, folks, now it's time. A segment that has really, really picked up some steam ever since we started rolling them in. Mikey Bear Down, Cuz, Joey Cold Cuts. Now, they've gone at it a little bit in the last few weeks. We had that monster parlay hit last night, so there are no fingers being pointed at Bear Down, Cuz. You wouldn't think. Um, but we move from A.J. Minter to the Gambler's Digest group chat, which consists of Mikey Bear Down, Cuz, the gambling wizard, and, of course, Joey Cold Cuts, the big fellow himself. Let's bring the fellas in. This is our prize pick segment with the boys right there coming off a massive, massive parlay. If we could all please, Cold Cuts, are you with us? Of course I'm with you. You, you created a new link, booted me out of the one that I was in the waiting room for, and then say that I have punctuality issues. We do not want to have hostility yet. We're coming off a big, big power parlay from our boy Mikey Bear Down Cuz, where we were all united last night for the greater good of putting cash in our pockets. Fellas, can we get a nice little round of applause? Just a nice... Round of applause there for the fellas. You really love to see it. You really do. Now, with that being said, first things first, welcome Mikey Bear Down Cuz. Welcome Joey Cold Cuts. Good to see you, boys. How are you, Bob? How are you doing, Bob? Can you hear now, me? Yes, I can absolutely hear you, Joseph. Um, we're going to start off, and it's never easy to do this, but we do need to give out some fines. Some, some what happened during the week. We need to throw out a couple fines. Um, possible. NFL Sunday suspension, one day. Yeah, suspension. I'd like to start. Okay, I, I, Gutsy, I know. Gutsy, I know you got coming in real hot. I know you got. I'd like to find Bob for for a for missing football Sunday. That's, that's B. That's, I know you got a lot to say. Pickleball and so Joseph, Joseph, Joseph. I know you got a lot to say, and I was actually going to start with with my own finds. If, oh, if I'm I, sure you were. You were looking right at me, Bob. If I may, I'd like to start with my own finds. Is that too much to ask, Bear Down? It'd be nice if the kid find himself once in a while. Get, get, Bob, Bob is Bob is like the NCAA. He's gonna sell, he's gonna self impose. I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna self gonna... I'm gonna self impose. And then if you guys think that it causes a one day group chat fine on NFL Sunday, then so be it. First things first. Um, I think the amount of pickleball that I've been playing in Jupiter, Florida, has affected the group chat and just my participation overall to the group chat. Bear down. Do you want to speak on that? that? I mean, you know, when you're listen, I always say before the game, are we going to get couch Bob, couch cuts, couch Mikey V? And what we mean by that is, is it going to be a situation where you're literally sitting on the couch watching the game, nothing else to do except give play by play potentially at points during the game, play by play commentary analysis in the group chat? Now, if that's not possible, there's no problem at all. But when you say that you can and then that doesn't happen, that's concerning. I agree. I, I, I agree. Cole Cuts, you want to touch on that at all? Yeah, no. I First and foremost, let me say the most consistent week-to-week person in our group is Bear Down. That's the correct. guy is there. He's making the picks. Correct. He's watching the games. He's giving us analysis. Correct. So I give him a lot of slack, but today I'm going to give him his just deserve because he deserves to be credited for what he does. The absolute person who contributes the least in this group is you, Bob. And it's not even close Oof. because I will say this, the games and Bear Down can attest to this. And I love you, Bob, but we got to, we got to call a spade a spade. 
when I miss games, it's because I'm at work and bear down and you know that. And I just, I'm at a Michelin star restaurant. I can't be on my phone checking to see the stats. When I'm on Sunday, I'm glued to the seat. I, the only time was last week because my uncle was in town. It was a big thing, but I'm glued to the seat and I'm rooting for us. I'm, I'm, I'm participating. This week, you took a three hour nap. You were MIA during the middle of the freaking uh, football games and the, and the biggest slate. We had Rumpelstiltskin over there sleeping and playing pickleball while, while well, maybe it's not Rumpelstiltskin. No, it's, I don't, it's, I Rip, just, it's Rip Van Winkle, not Rumpelstiltskin. Yeah, well, that's the one I, I was referring. I mean, Rumpelstiltskin is the guy, I think, who, uh, <laughs> he's the guy who, like, if you weave stuff out of gold. No, that was, yeah, uh, that's, Rumpel, that's, that's, that's Rumpelstiltskin. Now, okay, and, and, and what, that's what I was going to get to. The Sunday nap, and I touched about it a little bit earlier on the show, the NFL Sunday nap is not okay. It's not okay. The only thing that I will go back on is I did not have red zone. I'm at my parents. So, so the, the quality of the day with no red zone is a total, total game. The local game that I was getting was Dolphins first Falcons. And again, that does not excuse the three hour nap on a football Sunday. I was disgusted with myself. So I, I will own up to that. Um, the third thing that I'm going to do, and I don't know if we want to throw the blame as a unit, or if I'm going to take this, the, the sole blame for this is Mikey Bear Down Cuz gave us a Sunday night prize picks pick. And that prize picks pick happened to win us $1,500. Now, for the time that I got the pick, which I believe was about 750 Eastern Standard Time, I didn't feel that it was right to give the public that pick without them being able to do anything about it. So I felt that it was best to not put the pick out to the public. What we then do is win the parlay. And then I boast about winning the parlay when the faithful who are here for us every day, there was nothing that they could do about it. So I regret um, not, I regret not, I regret putting out the fact that we won the pick. Um, and I also to a degree regret not putting the pick out there. And I don't know if I'm sole blame for that or if Bear Down wants to hop on that, if Cold Cuts wants to hop out on it a little bit, but I did think it was best to not put that pick out to the public. Bear Down, are you, I mean, I'll start I'll, I think you owe it to Bear Down to put the pick out because it was a phenomenal pick and, and, and a hit and it just shows the credibility that he, how hot he's been. Oh, so you're talking post game. Yeah, I think you should post it. I think you should. Now, you sh where you were wrong is you should have given it to the people, even if it was last second. The true diehards are going to see it and they're going to jump on it. They deserve to win. But I think you absolutely were right in posting it afterwards. I don't think it's like thrown in people's faces. I think it's just a testament to, to what a great pick it was. Fair. Fair. Okay. And then, um, so I'm out of the fire. That That's that's everything that I did wrong. Um, and then I want to move over to Mikey Bear Down Cuss. Um, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, blessed Mikey Bear Down Cuz with an unbelievable set of eyes and something that took place on his story today, which <laughs> I feel really jeopardizes the brand, is Bear Down was caught in a Bahamas filter on his Instagram story, which gives you the real blue Bahama water type feel like look to it. You have blue eyes. So why do a blue eyed filter to me? Overall, not a good look for the brand. Cutsy, do you agree? And then we'll let Bear Down respond. I, I'm not here to comment on what he, this man does on his filter. I'm here to kid his picks. That being said, as a man's man, I've never ever put a filter on any story in my entire life, and I'm not about to start. So that's all I'm going to say about that. Bear Down, I mean, it's... Bad look for the brand. It's a really... I mean, this is the one of the faces to the brand right now. And the, the, with the Bahamas filter, I feel... Is just not an overall good look at the brand, especially when he has blue eyes. He uh, not can, can I say something? Sure. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. I've been very quiet. Um, the the sole purpose of that, first of all, you're uh, both of you are a day late and a dollar short. I've used this filter multiple times. You just finally noticed it. Secondly, I didn't use it to enhance my eye color. Anyone who knows my eye color knows it needs no enhancement. It speaks volumes for itself. And that's not me being pompous. That's me being realistic about the situation about my eyes. Thank you, mom. Thank you, dad. I, I was bestowed these these really nice eyes. I'm not going to lie about that. I do not need to filter for that. The purpose of the filter today was I had just gotten out of the gym. 
kid was a little blotchy, just got off the Stairmaster. I was on the Stairmaster for a good 20 minutes after a weight routine for about 30 minutes. So the kid was a little blotchy. Kid needed a little cleanup job, a little mop job. What, what, what does blotchy mean? People... Sorry. What, what, what is blotchy? Blotchy, like a little red, you know, a little red blotchiness. That's all from the sweat. I mean, I was profusely sweating. I was profusely sweating. So I wanted to just, you know, make it clean. You know, I, 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 I think very highly of always presenting a professional appearance to the public. <laughs> it's important to me because, again, this is about credibility and cuts. You spoke on it before. Um, but what I will disagree with is having to release the picks to prove my credibility. I don't need I don't think I need to prove my credibility anymore in terms of handicapping. If you followed along from the beginning, from week one, there's no more need for that. Now we're just playing. Now we're playing. Now we're in the thick of it. Things are developing. We get a better read on the teams every week that passes by. We learn more and more about these teams. But in terms of the filter, it's not the first time. Certainly won't be the last time. I'll be sure now to use the Bahamas filter almost every time I post now <laughs> because obviously this reaction I'm getting, I, I, I actually kind of like it. Um, and, and that's where we'll go from there. I have no issues. And cuts, I guess you're a, you're a man's man. God yeah. bless. I agree. I agree with that. You are. Certainly are. Now, listen, you got bags under my eyes. I keep the bags under my eyes. What you see is what you get in the cuts of camp. That's now one could blame Matt Nagy for the blotchiness that Bear Down got because Matthew. he had to work out harder, which which then circled back to having him use the Bahamas filter. So it all circles back to Nagy. Now, somebody that we're not going to leave out of the hot seat, and Colgates, I want you to brace yourselves and, and just take it easy for a sec here. And you are going to come into the hot seat, but this is not about it, in a way, it kind of is about you. Um, we do got to call out our sponsor who we love dearly and we're with them every week. We are there for the long haul, but we do need to call out prize picks for bear down. Cause Sunday morning puts out a five team parlay. Three of the teams hit out of the five and the way that they had the de graphic design, they said that we had won the bet for $80 in reality, we just got $80 returned. So we did have some money returned, but the overall bet is, it is a loss. It, it is not a win. So shame on me if I don't throw prize picks of the fire just for that. Now, we do love them. Bobby Props is your promo code. Get your free $100 match. But from the graphic standpoint, that can With that being said, Joe, this goes to you. This is our sponsor for you to be contacting customer service every single day, messaging them. It's not, it's not every day. It's close to it. it it's close. The, the amount of times that you've reached out to their customer service is it's unbelievable. I mean, come to me. We have the prize picks reps. You don't need to be contacting their customer service every single day. I, I mean, we were, up at five in the morning, the other day, the first thing you did, first call was you made was the prize picks customer service. Yeah, because prize picks on Eastern time. So I know by eight o'clock in the morning, that's when they're first getting started. But why are you calling them Pacific time at 530 in the morning? Because I, I couldn't sleep. I was sick to my stomach. <laughs> in, in, instead of, it's hard to take him seriously after that rant. And then he sucks down a smoothie. He's got a purple smoothie. Oh, it's a boba. He's a man's man, ladies and gentlemen. He's purple smoothie in hand. <laughs> God bless him. Joey cold cuts. Because always have been, always will be. They they returned eighty dollars. They could have taken our entire parlay, but they didn't. They gave us back it, and it was immediately fixed. And this is what and you know the head guys. I hope you made a call. And they them. immediately immediately fixed it. But for you to be contacting their customer service every single day, they're trying to run a business. They're running a damn good business. Well, one could make a claim that I'm actually giving business to the customer service people because if nobody ever called in, they'd sit there with nothing to do. Not all day. the way. Not the way you're speaking to them though not the way that you're speaking to them though they were i speak on behalf of the people that's what i do <laughs> now joe how can you wear an outfit like this what is that pastel that's a, that's pants the, now that's, that's, that's all pink outfit. purple uh, but but to be ridiculed to be ridiculed ridiculed over a filter and i'm going to look at you and in, in well, wow, it's like putting makeup on i don't do that can we now <laughs> the only person that has not entered the hot seat for their wrongdoing is Joey Cold Cuts. Prize Picks has jumped in. I've been called out for my wrongdoing. Bear Down has been called out for his Bahamas filters when he put blue eyes on a set of blue eyes. I, and I down. 
now it's what un- I'd like to it's do. It's unbelievable. And and <laughs> fair enough, I think you would agree with this is Joey Coldcut's Sunday night. Okay, we're about to hit a parlay. Oh we we have the completion total, okay, for Jimmy Garoppolo under 18. The amount of times where there was a pick six late in the game from the Colts that he was cheering for when we didn't want a pick six because it gives Garoppolo the ball back late into the game. But the reason he was cheering is because he said, and I quote, I have the Colts. The amount of eyes that we have heard from this guy in regards to his bets and not with the group, I think is beyond the point of it's insane and it's just not right. And you called them out again. It's just I, 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 I. <laughs> In reality, this is a team. He is focused on his pick of the parlay and he did it again. Bear down your response. Well, the the only issue that I had with cuts last night was, well, let's let's call it exactly for it. I think cuts is feeling pretty good last night. Cuts, yeah. would you agree with that? I think you were feeling mighty good. It was I mean, a you, were singing, you were singing Adele remixes on your balcony there. I mean, you were you were you were on one last night. It was great to see. Honestly, I like to see you kick back, and enjoy yourself. I think you deserve it. it doesn't happen but, enough. But gambling etiquette, gambling etiquette. Well, Bob, I don't even know if I'm as mad because I think just his awareness at the point of the potential pick six was not there. It just wasn't there. I could get over that. But what I couldn't get over, quite frankly, was when when uh, Garoppolo threw the interception or no, after the pick that was called back, the pick six that was called back, we had the FaceTime and Cuts said the game was over yeah, and the play was over. You can't do that because they did get the ball back. And this guy was literally two completions away until he threw that final dagger interception. Thank God, knock on wood, that he threw it. Until that play, he only needed to complete two more passes, and they were only at, like, midfield. So that over was, like, looking real dangerous. So just the gambling etiquette thing about saying the game's over when it's not completely over, I've seen the worst beats. I've seen missed extra point beats to lose games. I've seen pick sixes get backdoor covered. I mean... You know that too, Joe. I know you've seen it. So for you to say the game was over, I know you were in you were in ecstasy last night. You were in such a good place, such and, a such a happy place, and you wanted it to be over. You wanted to win that play, as we all did. So I know you were trying to will it into existence, and I appreciate that. But that is a little gambling etiquette faux pas that I think again something you're just going to grow from. That's why. I, I and I will say, Colgut, before you respond, I, I will say. Cold Cuts sees the field extremely well. If you go on a football Sunday with Cuts, he he sees the field. He totally gets the game at a very advanced level. But when it comes to gambling awareness, there are times where he doesn't know what we need, whether he's cheering for a two-point conversion or certain things where he gets ahead of myself. The thing for me was the amount of eyes that was sent in the Gambler's Digest group chat, which Baradon has brought awareness to. Cold Cuts will let you respond. Well, I mean, listen, here, here's, here's the thing. I, I was very aware of what was going on at that time. <laughs> there is such a thing, Bob, as being able to manifest reality. <laughs> oh, that is the most ridiculous thing I've ever Can I finish? In this moment, Bear Down. Was Bobby not the most pessimistic, downtrodden person kept saying, I don't like where we are. I don't think we're going to win. I was trying to reverse counterbalance that because it was so negative that that negative energy was literally propelling Garoppolo on that last drive. Reception after completion after completion. And I felt at the moment I had to do something to counteract it. I had to do something drastic and I just said, I'm going to wheel myself with positivity into winning this bet. Gambler's Digest at that very moment was the ultimate microcosm and showed the ultimate dichotomy between a person raised in northern metropolitan New Jersey and a person from Canada because <laughs> we are the most pessimistic, miserable fucking people on the planet. And you are the ultimate West Coast Canadian. Oh, everything's great. Everything's hunky-dory. Everything. 
when in reality we always think the worst you always think the best there's no fault really to anybody there it was just such a perfect microcosm of opposite ends of of the personality spectrum when it comes to how you view a, a bet we're always going to be pessimistic about it and cuts is always going to be you know glass half full we're glass half empty guys cuts is glass half full that's why we were but, 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 but joe the, the last thing that i'll say about it is it had nothing to do with manifesting we had the completion total for jimmy garoppolo at under 18 he was at 15 and you were cheering for a colts pick six no he was at 13 he, he was at 13 Regardless, a Colts pick six that instantly gives the ball back to the Niners, who are now down even more points and are forced to throw, even though they're in the middle of a monsoon. It To me, it has nothing to do with manifesting. Um, but regardless, nonetheless, we I, I also had the Colts plus three. I, uh, you hear the eye. Where'd you get that pick? Uh, it was a, uh, it was a signified uh, bear down cuz, uh, on cuts pick um and it was uh I, I rolled with it you gave me the pick i took so it. that it was... turns it into a bear down cuts pick just for the record well well it, was it your... ceases to once it leaves my mouth it ceases to be a bear down cuz pick and 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 it, it manifests into a bear down cuts pick if you actually book the action well yeah yeah it's your pick but because i'm taking it with such confidence i'm i'm embellishing it into into winning oh i got it Another, another, a, uh, what did you, what was the word you use? Manifestation. Of the <laughs> the, the, it's real, man. Read this stuff. By the way, Drake just posted, it's Drake's birthday today. Who and Drake just shit? posted on Instagram that he used to ride, he used to rent a Rolls Royce Phantom and spend all this money that he didn't have because he wanted to manifest it into real life. And today on his birthday, he got that same Rolls Royce and he said, manifestation complete. That's what cuts did that yesterday. Is, 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 when Drake picks 68% prop winners in NFL season, he could give me a call and then I'll be impressed by that. The Rolls Royce really doesn't impress me, cuts. I'm going to rent a Rolls Royce for us once prize pick season is That'd over. That'd be great. Then. We should make prize picks pay for that Rolls Royce, by I the way, think Bob. I, 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 <laughs> I think, we, I think, I think Drake. I think the Drake Rolls Royce has nothing to do with the Jimmy Garoppolo. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. Nothing it's at about all. manifestation. Nothing. nothing. Now it's just an example of how it works. We both we all talked, and you guys feel that you're not fully ready to make the Thursday night pick. That you're there's not nothing, there. there's nothing there. You're there's not nothing ready there. To, I'm not ready to write a test that's not been given to me. Th there is oh, that you boy. guys are not that you guys are not ready for that, and that's okay. And that's wait, okay. wait a minute, Bob. Don't twist the words around. Yeah, Bob. don't twist it's it, not, Bobby. It's not that I'm not ready. It's that I don't have any options. I have There's no two options. options. I am ready. I'm There's fucking two ready. Options. It's Cardinals. By the way, phenomenal matchup. Cardinals Packers. Phenomenal game. Cuts. You got to be fired up. That's I'm now I don't think De Devontae's not going to play. I don't think. Oh, he's going to play. He's going to play. Now, he's going to play. He just now, hit the COVID list. How's he going to put whatever, whatever. I'm sorry. I digress. I digress. But there's nothing available. The only thing available for that game right now is literally the passing yardage. That's it. Yeah, that's, that's it. terrible. OK, so what we're going to do is we're going to wait. We're going to hold off. We'll let the Instagram followers know what the Thursday night pick is well, well in advance. Okay? Yeah, here's your Absolutely. pick. Now, there here's is your pick, Bobby. Oh, Jesus Christ, Joe. What? And it's not it's not even up yet, but I'll tell you what the pick is. Whatever the Kyler Murray rushing yards is, take the over. Okay, okay, okay. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna hold off on that. We're gonna hold off on that. Um, something that I think Joe, you could really use some redemption on because I really, really, for a guy who knows food as well as you do, I really had an issue with the way you handled the top five candy bar last week. Now, for the Ask Bob segment, you could submit your question either through via DM or to our voicemail, somebody who asked a phenomenal, phenomenal question that I got that is redemption time. We're going to give you guys again, this is going to be the Ask Bob segment with Mikey Beardown Cuts and Joey Cold Cuts to close the show down. It's going to be a tough one. It's one that's going to make you think. I actually will go ahead and take the reins and start us off if you would like, if you are not ready. But the question we were asked, okay, is a young man from Virginia. This is from Will Arrington. Bob, I'd like to get your boy's take on the top five wedding cocktail hors d'oeuvres. Pass around cocktail hour, top five hors d'oeuvres. Dude, would you like me to go ahead and start? Go ahead. 
I'm going to go ahead and start. Number five, okay? I'm going to go one being the best, of course. Number five, I'm going to go with coconut shrimp. I'm going to put coconut shrimp in my five hole. In my four hole, I'm going to put Frank's in a blanket at four. Number three, I'm going to put spring slash egg rolls. If you want me to narrow that down to one, I'll go with egg rolls, but I'm going to put spring slash egg rolls. Number two, hit me with dumplings. I'm going to put dumplings at number two. And number one, I'd like to go ahead and lock in the crab cake. Mikey, bear down, cuz we will go over to you. By the way, Bob, your, your list for the candy bars was much better than this. That was that was not great. Where was the issue? Frank's in a blanket? Yeah, What? Who's, a, who, who, whose budget wedding is giving Frank's in a blanket out as an hors d'oeuvre? Frank's in a Frank's in a blanket is a is a very well known hors d'oeuvre. That's not a respect. You're not going to the Ritz Carlton and getting a Frank's in a blanket. Fair. <laughs> am I wrong? Bear down. Am I wrong? Uh, I mean, I I don't like them because they repeat on me. Hot dog, any kind of hot dog, Frank. It's just I. That's the last thing I want to put in my body at a wedding. It's just because it's just gonna it's gonna it's just not gonna agree well with me. I I have no time for that. I just don't like it. <laughs> But I, I mean, I don't like it. Bob likes it. I don't. That's all. Okay, all right. All right. So, uh, all right. I'm, I guess I'll start. Okay. At five, I'm going to go with the shrimp cocktail because I've seen shrimp cocktail passed around as opposed to the coconut shrimp. I, I like coconut shrimp, but I'm going to go with shrimp cocktail at number five. At number four, um, number four, I'm going to have to go with the crab cake as well, Bob. I'm going to take a crab cake as well at number four. I know you had it much higher in your list, but to me, it's at four. Uh, at number three, I am going to go with, oh boy, <laughs> so difficult, man. I tell you why I want to go to my number one and then I'll work my way back. My sure. number, my, my number one past hors d'oeuvre at a wedding. And it's, it's literally, there's no competition in my eyes. If I see the girl walking around, I will literally stop whatever I'm doing, whether it's ordering a drink at the bar. I don't care how long I've been waiting. I will seek her out to get the lamb chop, the past lamb chop or d'oeuvre. Okay. I will stop for the baby rack of lamb chop. I will I will go anywhere for it. Um, number two, going backwards. Obviously, I am uh, a big fan of Asian fare as well. And I will go with a, a dumpling or egg roll, whichever one it is. It really dumpling or egg roll. I prefer both. I, I prefer either. It doesn't matter to me. Um, but I guess if, if I had to pick one, I'll go with the dumpling. And then number three, I'm going to have to go with the old uh, the old beef crostini, the old beef crostini, the little little beef over the over the nice piece of toasted bread, Joe, if you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I don't mind that. And now, I mean, you could see him gearing it up. There's Bear Down's top five. You could see him gearing it up. He put O. Henry as his number one candy bar last week. This is a big shot at redemption here for the Canadian. Nobody knows food quite like Joey Cold Cuts. The bar's high. Cold Cuts, your top five wedding cocktail hors d'oeuvres uh this is tough um it is there's so it many is. variations and a lot of places do different style of hors d'oeuvres and some if you go to higher end places they do really integrative stuff that changes the landscape of it um here's what i'm gonna go with okay my number one to five actually i'm gonna go five to one so i'm gonna one. build it up i think it's better you go number one and then all of a sudden, you know, everybody's. So number five, give me, um, we're going to do chicken skewers. Number five, I think those are very good. You do a little dipping sauce. The chicken skewers, very good. Sometimes places do like tandoori chicken or different style. I think that that's great. Number four, I will do the cocktails, not the, the, the coconut shrimp, the cocktail shrimp. I think those are good. You get the big jumbo ones. Oh. They're really, really good. You are we saying go co cocktail or, or coconut shrimp? Cocktail, cocktail shrimp. Gotcha. gotcha. Little cocktail horseradish, shrimp. little horseradish cocktail sauce there. Cuts yes. a little extra spicy. Yes. Gotta have that. Gotta have that. Number three. Now I go to a lot of Italian weddings, so that's going to impact my position on this. And bear down, you probably have experienced this too. The prosciutto melon. Oh, the wraps nice. Is yeah, very phenomenal. Nice. Very nice. It's it's yep. very underappreciated and it's very easy to eat. It's refreshing. You got the melon, you got the prosciutto, the salty and the savory. That's it, fantastic. It, very That's good. Fantastic. Uh, number two, I'll do the crab cake. I think the crab cake is very good. Staple. And I like the aioli. Sometimes they put it in the little, little thing with the aioli right in it. 
so you can dunk it in the aioli. That is a, a, a real grade A change play playmaker if you can add the aioli to the crab cake. And number one, I'm going to add the slider. I think the sliders are awesome. You get a little, and some places they do with Wagyu. So you get little Wagyu beef Love sliders. That. Love that. It gears you up. It's like gears you up for prepping you for the meal. So it's a substantial bite. Yeah, as I opposed feel, to some of these small ones, you don't get as much. The slider is really top notch. I, like, I feel like the slider has become so prevalent that it almost like I, the last wedding I was at, for example, I was at a wedding last week on a Friday and it, the slider had its own station. They were doing sliders. They were doing cheesesteak and burger sliders on the griddle top at its own station. It wasn't even a pass hors d'oeuvre. That's how popular the slider has become. I'm going to tell you, we made one massive, massive gaff here all three of us and and maybe you'll disagree but we overlooked a major contender really bad job by three of us the bacon oh, wrapped scallop. scallop yes yeah, oh, yeah i that's would good. kill to change the bacon wrapped scallop out yeah. of my frank in a blanket i would kill that <laughs> that's, that's like missing that's the like frank missing the, the blanket has to stay it has to stay there it, it uh, to stay. by the way there your frank in the blanket is worse than my old henry I was going to say, I think, I, I don't think it's a bad, I'm, I'm still okay with my five because mind you, Oh Henry, you had it one. Um, and let's not talk about, let's not just forget about the chicken skewer, which was a little <laughs> concerning, but with that, that was low said, on my list. With that being said, with that being said, I really do think it was a big bounce back week for Joseph. I think the top five was a bounce back top five for Cutsy. Um, fellas, I, I love having you on. I really do. Um, and let's call a spade a spade. Since the boys have come on, we have seen a spike. We have seen an uptick in numbers, which is a beautiful thing. It's a testament to you two right there. I love the segment. I hope you love the segment. Um, Bear Down, we love you. Joey Cold Cuts, we love you. Folks, that is a wrap here. Of the Bro and the Dumb Show, we will see you next Tuesday. Uh, Bob, Bob, I have a question. Sure. When do we give our picks? Throughout the week. So we're going to be given at some point during the week. No need to, to disrupt the show there. There was no need to disrupt that closing right there. But he did. But he did. Um, gold cuts, we we love you. We, I mean, I thought we addressed that with, already. I mean, what, what, no, we I just wanted to know when so I could be prepped and ready wait, to go. But, but Joe, he literally, we... We addressed it. Bob said he was going to let Instagram know it was all the such followers. A good close too. It was. I was. I was grooving. I was absolutely grooving. It was almost as bad as the chicken skewers. Uh, uh, by the way, Bob, you've cut me off the last two segments, so now Oof. I got you on one. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Cold cuts coming out as hot as he comes in. We love you, boys. We appreciate you. We'll see you next time on the Brilliant Dumb Show.